What's going on, everybody? All right, so um, I've got these two printers here. They're similar but different. And this is an Ender 3 V2. This is an older Ender 3 Pro. I think it's an older one. My friend Dave gave me these. They didn't work, and we've been working on them. I've uh, done the direct drive conversion, dual gear extruder on both of them. Dave had put the BL Touch on this and the screen and the 4.2.7 motherboard. Um, I printed the drawer based off of a replacement drawer for a V2. And I had to make just one little modification. Um, and I modified the way the drawer was designed from the one that I found because I didn't like it and I uploaded it to printables. So if you're looking for one of these, you should be able to go on to printables and look up Ender 3 Pro drawer and it should come up. I'm the only one with one on there. So it's a remix of one for these. And I tried to get it as close as possible to that, but I wasn't able to do that. I need this design and I'm not advanced enough. What I did was I took a design I didn't like, modified it in Tinkercad and printed it. And it works good. The original one had, you can see those lines back there, a bunch of dividers. Um, I actually removed all of that, these little things here. So the design, by the way, this didn't come out great because of the setting on the printer with this stuff. You can see the temperature was funky. Um, but anyway, I designed it completely, just divided in two. And I just, this was a, this was a prototype. So the uploaded one is divided. Um, and I smoothed out some other stuff, so you probably won't get those lines in the back. Um, so, more, more like this drawer, but without the step in the back. Uh, if I could redesign it, I would put the step in the back, because the issue is where the, the ribbon wire goes. And right now it goes in between here, and it needs to go underneath there. So basically what I'm doing is I'm modifying a 3 Pro to have the benefits of a newer Ender 3 V2. And one thing it just doesn't have, and I don't really care about it really, is the belt tensioners. Um, there's several uh, prints out there to change those. Um, but this one has a very large bolt here and I would probably have to modify the prints in order to accommodate that bolt. Um, I'm not sure if maybe the new ones just have a small bolt there or something, but it appears to be different. So, uh, another thing I learned in my experience with these and modifying them is when doing the direct drive, it is better to have the connector facing up. And this one here, you can see it can catch uh, this one here that will catch right here too so you need to do something with it uh, you know move it out of the way figure out you know something um, I don't print very much with this one so the whole point of these printers really for me is just to modify them, not really print with them. Uh, I, I figured out some other stuff in the G code too that slows these down. So um, basically, uh, in order to make the other one similar, we need to move the power supply back here. We need a cover for that. The rails, by the way, are uh, narrower, I think, on this than this. Um, so the belt tensioners and covers and things like that are different. So on these, the fan 
pole is on the bottom. And they're, uh, I don't know if they're identical power supplies or not. Um, but what I did with this one here, in order to do the Z axis, you have to move these. And I notched out the plastic. You can do this one of two ways. This bracket here has a support in the corner. Let's see if we can see it. You see that triangle support? Well, that's on both sides, so I, I notched the plastic to accommodate that. I didn't want this thing hanging out further. What they would normally do, that bracket would be the other direction. So it would sit and come up here, and then your power supply would probably be about that much further out. I just didn't really care for that. Um, I think it's probably better to have the power supply right here. Maybe this looks better, but I think this is probably better. It can get more air. Well, you're going to hear it more, maybe, but... Um, and then the other thing that you have here is you've got this this motor just sitting here, and it's not covered or anything. You know, it's not like a huge deal, but it's just not covered. So, I thought about printing some brackets for that. Um, I believe these rails are different, and this sensor is definitely uh, mounted differently, or this one got bumped. I'm not really sure. It looks like it got bumped. I don't know that this thing's in the right place, to be honest with you. Um, I've never seen another one of these printers, so I don't know if that's crooked or not. I don't know if somebody did that on purpose. I don't know if that thing's supposed to be straight up and down. I'm going to say it's probably been whacked. And it ain't supposed to be in that direction. So, this one is like something's different on these. As somebody was mentioning, they're not the same. I just want this cover. I I don't know. Um, but I think that they're different. If you look here, that thing's like right on the rail. Whereas this one sits out further. So, it's probably got a longer belt, too. Look how far that thing is out there. So, you see that this one is in quite a bit further because this one, the motor starts where the rail ends on the other side. And the... We don't know what the length of these rails are, but I'm going to say that they look like they're probably all about the same size. Um, but, yeah, I think that that's just all due to the bracket being used on the 3 Pro. I just find it really hard to understand why Creality sells so many different versions of this printer. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. There's a 3 Pro, there's older 3 Pros, there's 3 Pros that have this, 3 Pros that have that. Um, and Ender 3 V2 with touch, without touch. Uh, Neo with touch, Neo without touch. A, a V2 Neo, a non V2 Neo. Uh, Ender 3 V2 S1, S1 Pro, I mean, it's literally just absolutely, it, it's like, I, I honestly, my opinion is it's done on purpose to cause confusion. And that way it makes it really hard for you to determine what printer to buy. Because if you go buy some of these other printers that they sell, like the S1 that's one Pro, some of these other ones, and then they have like a Neo Max, which is not even an Ender 3 really. 
it's like some in-between crap. Uh, you, you could spend more money on a slow-ass com computer. <laughs> a slow-ass printer. So if you bought, I believe, the Ender 3 V2 S1, it's actually going to cost more than an Ender 3 V3 SE. And it's going to be slower. So they've sort of tricked you there. So Creality has just so many damn printers. Now the good thing about I like about these ones here is these are highly modifiable. You can, you know, change them and switch parts around. You know, it's like, you know, old Chevys with 350s and that kind of stuff. Um, so it depends on how you want it. But, like, at the end of the day, I mean, if you plant slow and, you know, you make sure your settings are, you know, good. They're, they're a great printer for those people that don't need to do a lot of stuff and aren't in a hurry. Um, I don't really know what the limiting factor is. I'm just still learning a lot of this stuff myself. But it seems like I think a lot of it's probably in the firmware of the motherboard, which causes these to print extremely slow. So, I think physically the hardware and all that could probably print pretty easily at 200 millimeters a second and, and have good quality, but I just don't think you can do it with the, um, the firmware that's on the motherboard. I just don't think it's going to happen. Because if you look at the Ender 3 V3 SE, it's still running Marlin. And it prints fast. Real fast. Uh, average print speeds are 180 millimeters. That's the default on the slicer. But I, I've seen it print 250. I believe the physical limitations in the slicing software say 500 and uh, the acceleration I, I don't remember what the acceleration is but that's another thing on this that I discovered is the acceleration is set to 500 on this that's really really slow so with the maximum speed in the slicer of 500 and an acceleration of 500 that's kind of what you know limits the thing i pushed it uh to 1500 on the acceleration and 200 on the print speed on this one and it printed but it wasn't good so i didn't have to fiddle around with it a little bit more to see where it tops out at with still decent quality um I think I dropped it down to 100 with the same acceleration and it printed a Benchy that came out pretty good. So um, this one here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. If I want to move the power supply, I kind of do, but I, I'm like, eh, I don't know. And I've already got it mounted up, so I guess it's not really a big, huge deal. And you know the space underneath there isn't really going to help any and then i guess if i'm looking at this one i'm like well then i got to figure out what to do with all the wires the wires on the enders are kind of a mess back here so this one i actually used an extension cable for the extruder and i, I found that works actually a lot better you you can make it reach with the other one by splitting the ribbon wire and then pulling it through you know, that's what I ended up doing on that one. But, um, you know, between this printer and a Neo and a V2, I mean, uh, you're not really getting anything different. It's all going to be the same. You know, um, the touch sensor is great. Um, the bed leveling on the Neo, I found, with the stock software is really good. I don't have my Neo out here, but the Neo with the uh, factory firmware and the auto bed leveling works absolutely great. Now, this one here has BL Touch. This one doesn't have anything. 
these are both running the professional firmware and um, I'm still kind of getting used to that it seems that the tramming wizard on this works really really good with the touch sensor on this one here without it it's a pain in the butt um, you know forget about it it's it's just gonna take you quite a while even with the tramming wizard on here you're gonna make you know four adjustments over and over and over before you get it really close another thing too is that I changed the springs on this and that made a pretty big difference um, I still need springs for that the Neo already had the springs you want these color springs they're flat wound springs and so regular and they just seem to hold their shape a little bit better what was wrong with this was the springs were really soft and that back corner where that spacer is for the cable holder yeah it was kind of fighting me a little bit so but anyway um i'm gonna print some covers and stuff for this and I've been looking at the, just different ones that they have. Um, so you just got to make sure it's for the Pro. You see, this guy didn't cover the switch. And if I'm looking at his switch, let me go here and look at it a little bit more detail. I would say that mine is missing a screw or crooked. Um, another thing, too, you see here they're still using the glass bed like I am. I, I think probably removing the glass bed would probably be a really good idea and installing the magnetic sheet. The only reason I haven't done that is because these are working just fine with hairspray on them and I generally don't have to do anything to them. Um, I might take this and slice it up and... Uh, I might um, edit this in Tinkercad. I'm not interested in having this vent here. It's really hard to fill when somebody does that. Um, but I can fill it. And if I do it just right, it won't leave any marks. But the thing is, I, I don't want crap getting down in there. There's no reason it doesn't need to be vented. So um, this is the best one I've found as a starting point. Um, to fiddle with um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do so here is actually some of these power supply relocation power supply relocation so I mean really it doesn't matter what is this um, a sprite extruder yeah that would be a really good upgrade, I think, for one of these. I think I think if you put the Sprite Extruder on here, I think that's a game changer. I think that the, the biggest problem with these, I think, is the hot end. And I think with the dual gear, I think, you know, you're, you're great. That's like, you know, and then the direct drive, that's like the cheapest way to update these. I, I just can't believe they're still selling these things the way they are with, you know, $169 on Amazon and they say, ooh, what a deal. This is a, a reduced price. Well, it's always $169. And it's always $99 on eBay, so like, it doesn't really make sense to buy, buy one of these on Amazon, really. like I don't see any reason to buy one. I would have never paid $99 for any of these printers, but my friend Dave graciously gave them to me. So they were all broken. You know? These are a Tinkerer's Paradise, you know. So, with the uh, $219 on uh, Amazon for a, a 3, version 3, um, you know, I don't know what it is on eBay. It's a way better printer. I mean, it's kind of cheaper, but it prints really good. Mine had problems because the print bed was bent, so that was why I sent mine back and... Um, I'm happy that I did because I got the uh, Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro, and that's turned out to be an extremely good printer. The SVO7 that I have here with Clipper, I like it, but it's kind of a tinkering 
thing too. Um, it's not real consistent. It's more like these. So anyway, um, and I tried the, the Sonic Pad on the Neo, and I, I wasn't really happy with that. And um, Ender 3 Pro Essential and Worthwhile Upgrades. I'm just curious what that would be. Okay, what do we got here? These pictures sideways, so we don't really know what we're looking at. I don't like a direct drive conversion where the motor is in the front. Um, because then I can't even see the extruder at all, and i got to reach around to the back to even get to it. With these here, uh, you can, you know, kind of see what's going on and stuff. I, I just think it looks a little better, and it, it works a little better. Um, I, I've had them both ways on different printers. And I've in, in the end, I ended up putting the other one like that also. So I, um, I don't care for it being in the front like that. I don't know what that is. Some cable chain thing. And an, another thing, too, is I don't ever download stuff with branding on it. I don't know what that is. It looks very well thought out stuff. Um, and some of these guys have put a lot of time into this, you know, and they're not going to get any money from it. I don't know what all this is. There's a lot of stuff in here. So, you know, it's really nice that these guys share this with us. Um, because they don't get anything out of it. Um, here's a Y-axis motor mount. So some people have changed these, I think, to what you would find on the newer one. Um, there's just a lot of stuff out here. I mean, like, the limit is, like... I mean, for me, I don't have a problem adjusting the belt manually. Here, look at this. It's got a limit switch cover. Okay. I think that's nice. So, it's a separate type of deal. So, it's not printed all in one shot. Let's see here. It actually looks pretty simple, though. Yeah, that looks pretty clean. I think there's more than one version available then. Let's see here. What does it say? To improve the appearance of my printer, I designed a cover for the gears of the Y-axis stepper. This small design for the limit switch fits the Z-axis limit switch as well. Caution, you have to use supports for both the limit switch designs. Um, okay. I do like this. We'll go ahead and download it. Um, I, I would just like to print something very similar to that, though. But obviously we can't do that because of where the thing sits. It looks like it sits in, too. And it sits out on this. And let's see here. It's in a hair on this one. But it's probably in a little bit more on that. But anyway... I think we can determine that the uh, limit switch on this has been bumped and moved also. So, I'm going to print these and uh, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. Catch you later.